Hey kids! Hey kids! Hey kids, thanks for checking out the Treehouse Takeover. Before you get watching, we wanted to tell you a little bit about what the Treehouse Takeover is. It's our online kids worship service filled with music, teaching, and all sorts of fun. Every week, we get to hear one of our family church kids pastors or ministers teach us a message from God's Word. Family Church is made up of a whole bunch of different campuses. And each one of those campuses has their own kids ministry. Run by their own kid pastor or minister and has their own kids who go each week. Kids who are just like you. Just like you. Just like you. This means that there are so many different people who care about you and want you to know the truths of God's Word. That's right. Every single one of our neighborhood churches has their own unique Treehouse Kids Worship Service. And you can be part of it. Check out your local neighborhood campus every single Sunday morning where you will get to experience live worship through music, teaching, and giving. You will get to see friends, memorize Bible verses, sing songs to Jesus and about Jesus, play games, and learn more about discovering and pursuing God's design for your lives. Parents, make sure to click the link in the bio to locate your nearest neighborhood church. We hope to see you real soon in person. But for now, enjoy watching the Treehouse Takeover. And remember, we love you. We love you. Que nosotros te amamos. We love you. But more importantly, God loves you more. God loves you more. God loves you more. Pero mucho más importante, Dios te ama más. Boys and girls, welcome to the Treehouse. We are interns at Family Church this summer. My name is Kiara. And I'm Zaya. We are so glad you joined us today. Yes, we certainly are. You know, I've been loving this Investigating Jesus series because I'm curious about a lot of things, and Jesus is worth investigating. He certainly is. That's why we have been investigating Life of Jesus as we study through the book of Luke. Hey, Zaya, let's investigate the big idea and the points for today. Hmm, yes. That's a great idea. Let's go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to What's the Point? I'm Kenny, and this is Miss Jordan. Hey, Miss Jordan, did you know the summer's almost over and everyone is about to go back to school? Kenny, I did know that summer's almost over and it's time to go back to school. I've had an awesome time serving here at Family Church this summer as an intern, and it's been great getting to know you too. Are you excited to go back to school? Well, I really like getting to sleep in during the summer. I can go to the pool, play with my friends, and dig all the holes I want to all day. But I'm excited to go back to school because I love school lunch. Kenny, do you really like school cafeteria lunches? Yeah, I love the meatloaf, the pasta surprise, the taco surprise, all the surprises. All right, all right, all right. Okay, that's enough. School cafeteria lunch talk, I'm just way more interested to hear about the big idea you've come up with for today. Today's teaching and investigating Jesus series in the book of Luke. Did you come up with one today? Oh yeah, not to worry, Miss Jordan. Today's big idea is Jesus is the one who forgives. What a great big idea, Kenny. Did you also come up with some points to go along with that big idea? Yep. Point number one is Jesus has the power to heal spiritually. Jesus can heal our spiritual problems. Our greatest spiritual problem is our sin. Our sin leads us into brokenness, and the only way to escape sin and brokenness is by repenting and believing in the gospel of Jesus. Point one was great, Kenny, but what's point number two? Yeah, point number two. Jesus has the power to heal physically. That's a great point, Kenny. Jesus is God, and he can heal any sickness and disease. His power is great, and he wants us to trust his power and grow closer to him, no matter what. Even during a sickness, we can trust Jesus and his power. You've done a great job with the points so far today. Do you have a question for the day for us? Yeah, the question of the day is, bring what to others? A, ice cream, B, pops 
tentacles. Oh, I see. Jesus. Wow, that is a great question, Kenny. If there's one thing I've learned this summer, it's to not doubt your abilities. Your question's great, and the answer to the question is clearly C. We should bring all the people we can to Jesus. He's the one who can rescue and heal us from our sin and brokenness. Wow, that's a great explanation, Miss Jordan. Now, I'd like to keep telling you about my favorite school lunch delicacies. Let's see, there's the meatball surprise and the broccoli surprise. Kenny, maybe instead of talking about school lunch, how about we go get some ice cream instead? Does that sound good? Ah, that kind of reminds me that my favorite school dessert is the ice cream surprise, and it's so good. It kind of tastes like Rocky Road, but if it had like actual gravel in it. Standing still, no more going back. Oh, your love is moving me. I came alive, came alive when you found me. I'll never be the same. Oh, oh, oh. I shouted out to everyone around me. I am forever changed. Your love is moving me. Moving me. Wow, I love today's big idea. Jesus is the one who forgives. He showed us his true forgiveness when he took our sins on himself when he died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. You're so right. Jesus is the best example of true forgiveness. You know what? I would like to see what's happening in the tree house with our friends today. Me too. Let's go check in with them now. All right, Brock, slow down, slow down. Tell me that one more time about the vegetables. Oh, I can't, I can't slow down. It's just so exciting. Oh, the tomatoes, the mm -hmm. broccoli, the corn. It's all been grown so well. Wait, wait, wait. So you mean it's normal size now? 
more than normal size. It is huge. All right, so good tomatoes, good broccoli, good carrots, but are you sure you have good corn? Because I have a photo here that you might not have seen. What? Looks like some mm -hmm. nefarious scalawag has put his beak in your corn. What? No! Yeah, there's like a bunch of corn here all torn up. Somebody's been chomping on it. That is my corn! Oh, man! Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, 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 I, I got an idea. I'll put scarecrows what? in the fields. That might be a good idea. Mm. Somebody talking oh. about corn out here. Hey, Tony. What was that that went everywhere when you just came up? I don't know what you're talking about. What? Well, what you doing? Well, I heard somebody talking about corn, and I love corn, and I thought that I'd come up and see what's all going on. Whoa, whoa, wait. Hold still. Hold still. What, what is this? Well, what is this? It's, uh, it's nothing. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Guys, there's corn on him. There is corn on him. That's just wait, a coincidence. This is corn. Wait, 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 wait. My field is all destroyed, and you have corn? Hmm. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. Let me explain. It was me. I was eating your corn, Brock. I didn't know at first it was your corn, but my cousin and I, we were really hungry, and we saw all this corn, and we love corn, and so there were no scarecrows around, so we went over and started chomping. Mm. And ate so much corn. Mm. Brock, your corn is delicious. It's so good. It is. It's the best corn on the East Coast. Well... I know it is, but Tony, how could you? Right off the stock? Oh. Right off the stock. I'm so sorry, Brock. It will never happen again. Oh, that, it just, how could you do this to me? You know me so much. Oh, 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 oh I'm, I'm getting a phone call. Wait, Brock. Bye, guys. Do you forgive? Oh. Brock didn't forgive me. I think it's okay. He just got a phone call. Colin and I'm an intern this summer at Family Church. Right now, it's time for us to review our memory verse. We are in our series called Investigating Jesus, 
where we are learning from the book of Luke, who did detailed investigations, which proved that Jesus is who he says he is. Right now, we're going to review our memory verse for this series. First, I'm going to say the verse to you, and then we will all say it together two times with the motions. The memory verse is Luke 4:43, which says, But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, I w- for I was sent for this purpose. Okay, now it's time for you to all stand up with me, and we are go- all going to say the verse together two times with the motions. Here we go. Luke 4:43. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. That was great, but let's say it together one more time. Luke 4, 43. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. Great job, kids. You keep practicing that memory verse. See you next week. Brock has been gone for a really long time. I I hope that he's okay. Yeah, I'm sure that everything's fine. His corn is delicious, but, you know, I feel so bad about what I did. I told him I'm sorry, but I don't know if he'll forgive me. Tony, it's okay. You know, I think he just got distracted with the call from his grandfather. I really just hope everything's okay there. But, you know... It was a hard thing that you did, but it was in the past, and you said you were sorry, and That's so right. I, I really think that y'all can move past this idea. Uh, I hope so. No, oh, he's back, he's back. Brock, Brock. Hi, are you all right? Everything okay? Yeah, I'm all right. My granddaddy called me on the phone, and he said he saw all the crops were being destroyed by the birds, so we put a scarecrow up in the field, and it seemed to be working, but I, I realized that I may have overreacted a tad bit, And so, Tony, I am sorry, but I do forgive you for what you did. Oh, Brock, thank you so much for forgiving me. I'll never eat the corn from your farm again without asking for your permission. Thank you so much, Brock. Oh, you know what? I actually got something that you might enjoy. Here, let me, let me get it. Uh, uh. Oh, Mr. Steven, can you help me out? Yeah, what you got? Uh, Oh, Oh, look at this. Wow, some... Some Ooh. delicious corn. Oh, this is bag is falling corn? apart. This is some heavy wait, corn wait, here, is Brock. Wait, wait, fr- is that from your field? Yep, fresh oh. from the field. Oh, oh that's wow. the best corn ever. Mmm, it smells really good. Who's the corn for, Brock? It's for Tony. Oh. I know he loves it, so I thought I might as well bring him some. Wow, Brock, that's so kind of you. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, Tony, you care if I make sure this corn tastes okay? I, I don't want you to eat bad corn. Oh, so thank- I'm just going to check it out real that's quick. That's so right? considerate of you, Mr. Yeah. Steven. Okay. It oh. is very considerate of me. Okay, eating the corn. You oh. always have my oh. best interest oh. in mind. So good. Does it taste um, good? I'm not sure. Oh, you got to—he has to try some more. Well, I'm oh, glad wow. you like Quartered it. Ordered me in the eye. It's you ate so quite a bit of that. And delicious. That's amazing. Hey, I can give I mean, you all the corn you want. I'm not sure if it's good. Uh, hey, pass the well, corn, Mr. Steven. Hold on, I'm almost well, done checking. Well, wait, you should share it. Oh, we're sharing. You know, we could turn this corn into corn cake. Oh my goodness, Brock is finally growing his vegetables so well, but they were getting destroyed. Can you believe that it turned out to be Tony who was ruining and eating all of Brock's corn? I know, but once Tony realized it was Brock's corn, he was honest and apologized. It was great to see that Brock chose not to just say that he forgave Tony, but he showed his true forgiveness by offering Tony the best of his corn. Yes, that's a great example of truly forgiving someone with all of your heart. That's right. You know, I'm looking forward to learning more about Jesus from Mr. Cole today. Hey everyone! Man, what a great day it has been in the treehouse today. It's been so great to see Brock producing more and more crops at his grandpappy's farm, but apparently Tony thought it was okay to eat some of the corn from Brock's crops. Thankfully, Brock was able to forgive Tony for what he did. And not only that, Brock also freely gave Tony some extra corn to have for himself. Brock was able to sincerely forgive Tony for what he had done. Have you ever been in a situation like Brock and have had to extend forgiveness to someone? Or maybe you're more like Tony and are in a situation where you're in need of forgiveness. Maybe you lied to your parents and told them you didn't do something you did, like breaking something in the house. 
Or maybe you lied and told them you did something you didn't do, like cleaning your room. Maybe you need forgiveness because you were treating one of your friends poorly by making fun of them, and now you feel bad. Well, the good news is that today's big idea teaches us that Jesus is the one who forgives. But here's the thing. Jesus forgives us by setting us free from the punishment of sin and taking our sins up on that cross. We recently started a new series called Investigating Jesus, where we have been learning that Jesus is the one. In our time studying the Gospel of Luke, we've seen Jesus begin his ministry by resisting the temptations of the devil himself, showing us that Jesus is the one who helps us. We saw Jesus teach in the synagogue and show that the Old Testament points to Jesus as the one who rescues. And last week, we saw Jesus call his first disciples, and we learned that Jesus is the one who calls us. In today's lesson on investigating Jesus, we're going to see how Jesus forgave the sins of a paralytic, a man who was not able to walk or move certain parts of his body. In Luke 5, Jesus is in a home teaching to a great crowd while some Pharisees and scribes were, were there listening to him. While Jesus is teaching, four friends are carrying their paralytic friend on his bed so that they can bring him to Jesus to be healed. When they get to the house, the crowd was so big that they couldn't get into the house. So they carried their friend up to the roof and lowered their friend down to Jesus through the roof. Listen to what Luke 5 verse 20 says. And when he, Jesus, saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Jesus forgave the man's sins because of his and his friend's faith. But when Jesus said, Your sins are forgiven you, the Pharisees were questioning Jesus because only God alone can forgive sins. Listen to how Jesus responds to the questions of the Pharisees in Luke 5, verse 24. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. Jesus has the authority to forgive sins, but the Pharisees did not recognize that. So in order to help them believe, Jesus tells the man who cannot walk to get up and walk home. And guess what happens? Luke 5 verse 25 says this, And immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home glorifying God. The man immediately got up, picked, his bed, picked up his bed, and went home glorifying God. Jesus healed the man. Why? To show that he is the Son of Man, the one who forgives. The gospel is the good news that Jesus left heaven and came to earth. He lived a life without sin, died on the cross for the sins of the world, was buried, and rose from the grave three days later. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, he is offering you forgiveness. Jesus is and has forgiven you. And since Jesus is the one who forgives, as Christians, it's our job to bring others to him, just like the friends of the paralytic. Maybe that's inviting your baseball teammates to church or sharing the three circles with your neighbor or praying for the faith of your family. Whatever it is, don't give up because Jesus is the one who forgives. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love that you have poured out on us. Jesus, thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection, which has offered us forgiveness for our sins. Jesus, I pray that right now you would help us and lead us to bring others to you, that others may be forgiven of their sins. We love you. We praise you. We pray these things in your son's name. Amen. That was so great. I love how Mr. Cole taught us about how the paralytic man and his friends showed their faith in Jesus by doing whatever they could to seek him. Jesus showed his true forgiveness by not only saying the man was forgiven, but he showed he was forgiven by healing him so he could walk. Unlike the Pharisees, we believe Jesus is the God who forgives us and saves us. You're so right. Boys and girls, 
Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world? If so, then you can be confident that Jesus has come to rescue you from your sins, which separate you from God. You see, the good news of the gospel is that God sent Jesus, his one and only Son, who took the punishment for your sins through his death, burial, and resurrection. And as we're investigating Jesus, we hope you show Jesus your faith by trusting in him as your savior today with all of your heart. If you have, then we encourage you to tell your parents or kids pastor or minister so that we can be a help to you with those next steps. Well said, Kiara. Kids, it's been great being the church together. Let's go be the church out there. And don't forget, we love you. But more importantly, God loves you more. more.